all-new Dr. Phil. Her husband of 14 years. I have so many questions. I just want to know the truth. Ran off with their daughter's best friend. I don't want to believe it. He's 45 years old. She's 16. Now. From the moment we met her, she was very clingy. What do you think about her calling him dad? It's creepy. The wife speaks out. There would be hours upon hours that they would be on the phone together. In an exclusive interview. He wanted her around all the time. I'm his wife, and Amy was getting more attention than myself, and I was very jealous. Do you believe that their relationship is sexual? 45-year-old Kevin Esterly made headlines when an Amber Alert was issued for 16-year-old Amy Yu. The missing girl, who was best friends with Kevin's teenage daughter, disappeared on March 5th. She was discovered almost two weeks later with the father of four at a luxurious Mexican resort. Police arrested Kevin and claim he and Amy carried on a secretive relationship for months before running away together. Take a look. An Amber Alert has been issued in Mexico for an Allentown teenager. The mother of a missing 16-year-old Pennsylvania girl is pleading for her safe return. Police believe Amy Yu ran off one week ago with Kevin Esterly, the father of one of her friends. The 45-year-old is allegedly in a relationship with the high school student. Sixteen-year-old Amy Yu seen here with 45-year-old Kevin Esterly on his past family's vacation was reported missing last Monday. This is the corner where Yu's family last saw her. She was dropped off here along with her brother and was never heard from again. Yu's mother tells us her daughter was taken by a man who befriended the family at church, someone she had trusted. She just walked out. She just went somewhere. Back at home, his mother, Mo Lu, discovered her passport was missing along with cash. I felt mad. Why not? Because what her actions did and what her, like, what he did. Police say they believe Esterly's red 1999 Honda was ditched in Philadelphia. Court records say Esterly took about $4,000 from his estranged wife's bank account before fleeing. Hours later, you and Esterly boarded American Airlines Flight 877 from Philadelphia to Dallas, where a local resident spotted them and notified law enforcement officials. Just the way he was rubbing her leg, it just did not seem like a father-daughter situation. The Mexican government posted an Amber Alert saying that you is believed to be traveling in Mexico. An Allentown teenager and a man she went to Mexico with have been found. 16-year-old Amy Yu and Kevin Esterly were located in Playa del Carmen this morning. Kevin Esterly was arrested and is now being held in Miami. He's charged with child custody interference. Lawyers say this is a bizarre case, the tale of a man who abandoned his family, four girls and a wife, to run off with a 16-year-old girl whom they say he had an obsession. Today, in an exclusive interview, Kevin's wife, Stacy Esterly, is speaking out for the first time about her husband's lies and betrayal. She'll reveal how she found out her husband rented a secret apartment and how he complimented the looks of a girl who called him dad. What did she suspect? What did she know? Here's our exclusive interview. This is really a cautionary tale, I mean, for so many families. Absolutely. So many moms out there that can get caught in a situation that unravels. Now, you've been married how long? Uh, it would be 14 years, October. And how long did you know your husband before you got married? Probably nine months. So nine months, you get married, you don't see any red flags, you've been mm -hmm. married all these years. Yeah. Any infidelity? No, not that I know of, no. There's no time along where you felt like he was behaving inappropriately, flirting with somebody, not at cheating all. with you? Nothing. Now, when and how did you meet Amy and at what age? We met her um, about eight years ago. She's 16 now, so probably around eight, eight, nine years old, we met her, and my daughter was two years younger than her. At that time, her mom was going to the church as well. Mm -hmm. And we just started doing church functions together. You know, we started having her over for play dates. What about her father? Her father's in China. 
he was not a father figure in her life. Correct. Was there anyone that was a father figure in Kevin. her life? Kevin. Just him? Yep. So to the extent that she got male attention, certainly adult male attention, it was from him? Absolutely. Because you describe her kind of like as a fifth daughter. Absolutely. And was she bonded to you? Absolutely. And when I say bonded to you, you had a maternal bond with your children, and mm -hmm. you, you would hug them and comfort them and be nurturant mm -hmm. with them. Were you with her as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. So if you guys were watching TV or something, she'd crawl up on the couch with Absolutely. you just like the other kids? From the moment we met her, she was very clingy. I felt that she was crying out for attention. How about with your husband? What kind of father was he in terms of showing affection to the kids and all? He, that's one thing I have to say about him. He was a great father. And that's the thing that I have so many questions because he promised he would never ever leave them and he did. Was he affectionate with the daughters? I mean, he would hold them and everything, but nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah, I, I'm not suggesting right, that yeah. he was inappropriate, but right. he'd give them a hug and they'd oh, sit absolutely. in his lap or something. Oh, absolutely. Her too? No. Amy wouldn't do that? No. So where your daughters would climb up in his lap or sit there and yeah. eat an ice cream cone or something, she would not. Right, absolutely not. But she would with you. Yeah. She'd cling to you like your girls, absolutely. but not with him. Right. So there was a difference in his mind and her mind. Mm -hmm. When did that change? About eight months ago, I expressed okay. my concern that I didn't want Amy around because he had made a schedule and presented it to her mother, Yulon, stating that he wanted to pick her up every Monday after school, every Tuesday, they would be at church together Wednesday, she would stay home Thursday, he would pick her up Friday, she would sleep over Saturday, and we would take her home Sunday. It got to the point that there was too much conflict between Kevin and I. The girls even approached Kevin and said, Dad, when Amy's around, you don't play with us, you don't spend time with us. So there was a turning point on why he wanted her around all the time. And my relationship and Amy's relationship definitely fell apart about eight months ago. Okay, so that would have been in the summer. Mm-hmm. She would stay with us during the summer. Okay. Was your home her base of operations? Absolutely. This didn't just start one day. Mm -mm. It had to ramp up. What happened leading up to that day where an alarm went off in your head and said, wait a minute, time out, this is not okay. I would say probably when we were on our family vacation. What did you see, what did you feel on that family vacation that you said, this has crossed the line? There was a time um, we were inside and Amy was gone and Kevin was gone and here they were down at the beach taking pictures together on the beach and I remember getting very upset with him because you're leave, you know, our girls are back here, I'm back here, but you're down on the beach with Amy. Like a couple. Absolutely. And I was very jealous, and I've been jealous for the last eight months because I'm his wife, and I wasn't getting the attention that I should be getting. <clears throat> Amy was getting more attention than myself, and I expressed that I was very jealous. Now, this is a girl that crawled up in your lap and watched mm -hmm. TV with you. Yeah. This is a girl she would that- She call me mom. Did her behavior towards you change? Absolutely. When, once I told her I didn't want her here and I was going to her mother, the attitude started. There was an argument Kevin and I gotten into, and I told Amy, I said, listen, I said, you're going to have to stay home until things calm down. And I remember her looking right at me and saying, why am I going to punish myself just because Kevin's acting like a jerk? I was stunned. And what, what did that mean? Why should she have to stay home? Because Kevin and I are arguing. Okay, so she's saying, why should I have to remove myself yep. from this situation? Because you two are having a fight. Yep. And that had to send a bell off in your head. Oh, absolutely. She wouldn't call me. We would probably have daily conversations that stopped. Just, there were so many things that I found out on my own. I found out he would track her phone and I approached her on it and it was like she enjoyed it. She liked knowing that somebody knew. knew. He expressed to Amy's mom, Yulon, um, you know, listen, I'm here, 
you know, I promised Amy I would never let her down. I'm gonna take care of her. He would email her teachers, asking about how she's doing in school. Just, I felt like he was involved in a lot, which I was okay with. But then it came to a point when I found out about him tracking her phone, when Did he do that with your girls? No, absolutely not. She would always have boys call her phone. That's why Kevin said he did track her phone. Was he jealous of boyfriends? I don't know if it's true, but I was told that he contacted a few of these people and said, listen, don't call Amy again. So. As a concerned father or as a jealous boyfriend? I don't know. But he did it? Yeah. What'd she call him? Dad. She called him dad? Mm -hmm. Yes. So she calls him dad. Yep. During the time that this was going on, mm -hmm. knowing now what you know, what do you think about her calling him dad? Coming up. She had taken a selfie and he responded that she looked very good. And she went on saying, please don't shave until next time I see you. Do you believe that their relationship is sexual? Next on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think I saw an interview and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martel's new boo thing. Oh. She felt probably happier when he was leveling down. Mm -hmm. But the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martel. Hey, what up? And hey, don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, heat. it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville. New episode, Saturday at 8, 7 Central. Bring home a spellcasting adventure with the Harry Potter Magic Caster Wand. Stupefy! Connect your smart devices, cast spells, and witness the magic come to life. Lights. Lumos Maximum. Sounds. Media loading. And your TV. Expecto Patronum. Cool. The Harry Potter Magic Caster Wand. Order now. There is nothing hotter than real, honest-to-goodness love. Mama wanna tell you where it's at, I wanna get that. I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the ball big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami Yacht Park. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? Best part about hosting Worst Cooks in America. Oh, it's a learning experience. Ah! Oh, I have to turn it on. I cut my little thingy. No, no, no. Woo. Watch out. Ah! You'll get used to it. Season premiere, Worst Cooks in America, Sunday, January 1st at 8 on Food Network. Kids Baking is getting a corporate bakeover. So many kid entrepreneurs. For the greatest merger since... I'm mashing up brownies and tuna soup. Baking food, making money. <laughs> I hope it turns out well. Season premiere, Kids Baking Championship, December 26th at 8. We now return to a Dr. Phil exclusive. Bail has now been set at a half a million dollars for the 45-year-old Allentown man who police say ran off to Mexico with a teenage girl. Kevin Esterly was arraigned today on a felony charge of interference with the custody of a child. He was extradited back to Allentown yesterday from Miami. Esterly and the 16-year-old Amy Yu were found at a resort together 12 days after they were reported missing. So she calls him dad yep. during the time that this was going on, mm -hmm. knowing now what you know, what do you think about her calling him dad? It's creepy. I don't even know. Physically, was she precocious for her age? Was she mature for her age Absolutely. physically? Absolutely, yes. Do you think that factored into his reactions to her? Yes. We had a swimming pool and she would be out there. We would have, you know, 4th of July parties and everything. Did you ever overhear conversations between the two of them that were personal or seemed out of the ordinary? No, I, the only thing that I ever found was a conversation between them on Facebook, which then that led into the altercation between Kevin and myself at my house. What did that Facebook conversation say? She had taken a selfie and he responded, I'm not gonna say the exact words, but that she looked very good. 
And she went on saying, please don't shave until next time I see you. And he responded, well, hopefully that won't be too long. So the conversations were very inappropriate. I went to him, you know, asking what these were about. And that's when, you know, we got into an altercation, which led to the police coming to my home. Let's talk about what was said before the altercation. What did he say when you take this Facebook conversation and said, you're commenting on her body, right? Mm -hmm. But clearly it's intimate conversation, right? right. He's commenting on her body. Mm -hmm. And so you confront him with that. It's in black and white. Right, absolutely. What did he say? He said, well, you're crazy. You don't know the whole conversation and stole my phone. And that's when it escalated and we got into an argument. Uh, my girls were there. Did he cause you to doubt yourself? He did. Kevin is very manipulative. He has the correct answer for everything. So everything that I would question, I would sit back after he came back with the answer, and I would say, maybe I am crazy. Well, um, her brother mm -hmm. has commented on this. And he's how old? Um, he's 14. And he was commenting on the fight that you had with Yulon. Let's listen to what he had to say. They were yelling. They think that Amy and Kevin actually are sleeping together and doing some stupid stuff. I think they know or they plan to do this. I think it was both of their ideas because Amy's not that stupid doing a this stuff. She obviously knows how to do it. Yeah, and he's talking about the running away here, right? Mm hmm What's your reaction to what he's saying? I remember that argument. I had shown Yulon the Facebook messages, and I also had a picture that I presented to her, and it was Kevin, Amy, and then my daughter. And he was laying there with his arm around her, and she wasn't understanding. I said, he's a 45-year-old man, she's 16. He, they should not be laying like this together. And with Yulon's culture, she thinks everything's sleeping together. Those words never came out of my mouth or her mouth that night, um, saying sleeping together, but um, definitely inappropriate with them laying together on the couch. Do you believe that their relationship is sexual? I don't. I. It's so hard because like I said, we've been married for 14 years. I did question it once to him and to her. I had asked her, did Kevin ever touch you? And she's like, oh my goodness, why would you ever ask me that? You know, he's my dad. And I said, okay, I, I just had to ask you that. And I asked him and he would always say, she's 16 years old, I, she's my daughter, why would I ever do that? And like I said, there's so many questions. I don't, I don't have proof that they were sexual. I don't know what happened when they took off. I don't know what happened between when I found out Kevin had an apartment and he was away from us and our children at home. So I honestly can't say one way or another, but in my heart, I don't want to believe that they were sexual. And I'm hoping that this was just an infatuation with him trying to help her as a father figure. and. He got sucked into something, and I don't know. I don't have the answers. This is the Court Street Allentown apartment house where Kevin Esterly rented an apartment less than four blocks from 16-year-old Amy Yu's home. The apartment landlord is suing Esterly for his last month's rent. If they weren't sexual, why have an apartment? What is he doing in that apartment? What are they doing? Okay, he has an apartment that you didn't know about. No. What I was told is the gentleman who rented him the apartment was our mutual friend that we knew for 15 years. And he came to me saying that Kevin went to him back in December and said, hey, I have a 19-year-old girlfriend and I need an apartment. And my response was, he has a wife and kids. You should have never rented him an apartment. Like, he should be at home with his family. 
So you, you hold out the possibility that it wasn't her. Yeah. But he didn't take a 19-year-old to Playa del Carmen. No. So I guess I'm wondering, what are you pretending not to know here? I, I mean, am I being cynical? Or are you being naive? Coming up. How much did he take from your account? He took 4,000. Did it leave you in a bind? 28 cents. He leaves you and your children with 28 cents. Mm -hmm. But he's going to explain all of this when he gets out. Is there an explanation? Next on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think I saw an interview and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martell's new boo thing. Oh. She felt probably happier when he was leveling down. Mm -hmm. But the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martell. Hey, what up? And hey, don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, heat. it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville. New episode, Saturday at 8, 7 Central. Bring home a spellcasting adventure with the Harry Potter magic caster wand. Stupefy! Connect your smart devices, cast spells, and witness the magic come to life. Lights. Lumos Maximum. Sounds. Media loading. And your TV. Expecto Patronum. Cool. The Harry Potter magic cast a wand. Order now. There is nothing hotter than real, honest to goodness love. Mama wanna tell you where it's at. I wanna get that. I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the ball big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami Yacht Park. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? Best part about hosting Worst Cooks in America. Oh, it's a learning experience. Ah! Oh, I have to turn it on. I cut my little thingy. No, no, no. Woo! Watch out. Ah! You'll get used to it. Season premiere, Worst Cooks in America, Sunday, January 1st at 8 on Food Network. Dr. Phil's exclusive interview continues. We're told Kevin absolutely knew this 16-year-old girl for eight or nine years and was treated like the fifth daughter in the family. The criminal investigation continues, probing how long the relationship existed between the couple. A family attorney says warning flags went up about the amount of time Esterly had been spending with the teenager who was just two years older than his own daughter. And they had an agreement that uh, Kevin was not going to have any contact with Amy anymore. That lasted less than 24 hours. He couldn't help himself. He had to see her, had to be with her. I guess I'm wondering, what are you pretending not to know here? I, I mean, am I being cynical? No. Or are you being naive? Probably naive. I, I just know that he gets an apartment. Mm -hmm. Was she ever in the apartment? That I don't know. But you know they went to Mexico. Absolutely. And where'd they stay in Mexico? At a resort, and then they had an apartment. What would be the reason to go to Mexico and get an apartment? Well, let's assume it's not right. sexual. What would be the alternative motivations for doing that? N nothing. I, I don't even have an answer for that. I think something happened back here. I don't know what that just they had to get away from. Like what, maybe? I don't know. When he was checking her out of school, nobody was objecting to that, right? No. It was okay with her parent? Well, her mom didn't know. Would she have objected if she knew? I mean, the daughter was splitting time between your house and theirs. Right. If they called her and said, you know, he's picking her up, she would thought, well, okay. Absolutely. I mean, that wasn't a red flag, was it? No. And that's the thing. I mean, her mom, Yulon would call us and beg myself or Kevin, please come pick Amy up. She doesn't listen to me. At times, she would beg us to take her son as well. So Yulon knew all the time she was spending at our house. She knew there were times that they would go on snowmobile trips and different places. And I distinctly told Yulon, I'm not going with, I'm staying home. She's like, okay, I trust Kevin, that's fine. So 
She knew all along what was going on. There were several times I approached her. I said, I don't want Amy at the house. And she said, well, Kevin told me, you know, that he makes the decisions and to go through him and not to tell you anything. I said, Yulan, I'm the mother. And if I don't want her at my house, then she's not coming over. So there were numerous times that I reached out to her, expressing concerns, and nothing was ever done. You told her things have gotten inappropriate. Oh, absolutely. And when you said inappropriate, if you didn't think it was sexual, what did you mean by inappropriate? I don't know. I, I mean, I don't have full proof that there was sexual relationship, but I do know the conversation was inappropriate at the level for being a father figure. How did you define inappropriate? Just him telling her how good she looks. I mean, I went through our call log for our cell phones. There would be hours upon hours that they, they would be on the phone together. And that's not normal for a father-daughter relationship. I mean, he doesn't talk to our children like that. He doesn't even talk to me on the phone like that. During this time that now you mark this as an eight-month period, was he less involved with you? Absolutely. Did your sex life change? Oh, absolutely. Did it go from what you would consider average for a couple married as long as y'all had been to half or nothing, or what, what happened? I would say probably half. I mean, half the time he wasn't home. He sat there and told myself and my children that he was staying with friends because Kevin and I fighting, he wanted to sit and think about, you know, our relationship and everything. And I believed him. But at that point, I didn't know he had his own apartment. I thought he was staying with friends when in reality, he had an apartment. During that eight months, when he was off thinking with friends, was she not there? No, she wasn't there. Um, her mom knew she wasn't coming over to our house. There was, I would say, the last two weeks leading up to them leaving, March 5th. Kevin was home, and there was one week he would leave every night, probably for about two hours. He said he was going out to eat with friends, and I would be like, OK. The point they took off, Yulon told me that same week, Amy was going to her saying, hey mom, I'm going to meet friends for dinner. And it was the same time. Mm -hmm. So they were meeting up that I do know. I just don't know where, what they were doing, but they were definitely meeting up for at least two hours. But you don't know where they were meeting, but he had this apartment. Right. You know them both. Mm -hmm. Let's assume, because they're not here to say. Right. And let's assume that they were here. Mm -hmm. He would say, Absolutely not. Absolutely. Not a chance. Are you kidding me? I think of her as my daughter. Yes. Absolutely, unequivocally not. He denies it 100%. Yep. If you ask her, he's telling the truth. Absolutely not. Are you kidding me? I think of you as my father. Yep. That's perverted. Don't even say that. How can you even think that? That's their side of the story. Absolutely. And you know them both, so let's assume that's the truth. What would they be doing? How would they spend that time? Coming up. I saw her leaning on him, which daughters do, but just the way he was rubbing her leg, it just did not seem like a father-daughter situation. I mean, strangers are saying right. that he's patting her on the leg or rubbing her on the leg, but the jury's still out with you. Closed captioning provided by... I'm taking you down bit by bit. I can't wait to see you try. It's only just begun. This is your lucky day. Time to upgrade. <laughs> because at 9, 8 central, dreams will come oh, true. You can have it all. My God. Catch an all new My Lottery Dream Home, Friday at 9 on HGTV. There is nothing hotter than real, honest to goodness love. Mama wanna tell you where it's was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the ball big time. 
I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami yacht park. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? Next on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think I saw an interview, and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martell's new boo thing. Oh, she felt probably happier when he was leveling down. Mm -hmm. But the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martell. Hey, what up? And hey, don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, heat. it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville. New episode, Saturday at 8, 7 central. Tonight. With somebody out there targeting the cheerleaders. You never know what's happening next door. As far as I know, it was my neighbor. Murder in the Heartland, all new tonight at 9, followed by an old murder under the Friday night lights on ID. Kids Baking is getting a corporate bake-over. So many kid entrepreneurs. For the greatest merger since... I'm mashing up brownies and cheese and soup. Baking food, making money. I hope it turns out well. Season premiere, Kids Baking Championship, December 26th at 8. Our worth is not given. It must be made. This is your chance. Our best shot. Surprise! This is going to be one of the best nights of my life. spellcasting adventure with the Harry Potter magic cast of wand. Stupefy! Connect your smart devices, cast spells, and witness the magic come to life. Lights. Lumos Maximum. Sounds. Media loading. And your TV. Expecto Patronum. Cool. The Harry Potter magic cast of wand. Order now. No matter what part of my story you come in at, I'm always chasing the music. Nobody was trying to find a fat black girl that rapped and sang and played the flute. If I'm on that stage, we're connecting to something higher. The show must go on. We now return to Dr. Phil's exclusive interview. The couple was spotted at the Philadelphia International Airport by a local resident who says something just didn't seem right about their relationship. For the first time since they disappeared, information has surfaced about the movements of 16-year-old Amy Yu and 45-year-old Kevin Esterly. The couple was spotted at Philadelphia International Airport March 5th boarding a plane to Dallas. Fellow passenger Frank Castrovinci took notice of them when they started asking people to switch seats so they could sit together. I just started thinking, I wonder if he adopted this this young girl. Castor Vinci says you was quiet during the flight and at first Esterly appeared fatherly. But then I saw her leaning on him, which daughters do, but just the way he was rubbing her leg, it just did not seem like a father-daughter situation. Esterly has four young daughters and is the coach of a girls' soccer team. A person close to Mrs. Esterly says the family is in shock. Tell me about the gentleman that saw him on the airplane. I guess he thought it was a little strange, them traveling together, but he thought it was a father-daughter relationship until she had leaned against him, and then he started rubbing her leg. Yeah. So it didn't look quite so much like Dad. Not at all. Then. No. But again, you don't know if it's gotten romantic. I mean, strangers are saying right. that he's patting her on the leg or rubbing her on the leg, but the jury's still out with you. Like I said, I I know it's inappropriate, and I don't want to jump and accuse uh -huh. without having that proof, and I don't think I'll ever get that proof, because obviously if they don't cooperate being married that long, you don't ever want to think your spouse would do something like that, especially with a 16-year-old. But there's something that's just not right. You know them both, so what would they be doing? How would they spend that time? That's the thing. Night I Night after night. I mean, he's 45 years old, she's 16. I, I said, how, like, what conversations can you have? Asking her how school was, 
I mean, there's nothing to talk about. They don't have anything in common. Um, I don't, I don't think that they could be doing anything. But your daughter was Amy's best friend. Absolutely. Did she ever pick up on anything? Nope. What does she think now? She's angry. She feels betrayed. Was she surprised that they were in Mexico? Absolutely. I had to keep them home for a while from school because it they were humiliated in school, especially with the oldest. She's in high school. What does she think they were doing in Mexico? Does she think they were romantically involved? Or what does she think? She doesn't say anything. What she does say is that she never wants to see them again. And she's, I think, more hurt by Amy because that was her best friend. She feels just very betrayed by her. Amy's mother discovered her daughter had listed Esterly as her stepfather on school records. Police say he checked her out of school 10 times without her mother's permission. Amy marked him down as a stepfather, and we found out he had signed her out over 10 times. Without her mother's Correct. permission. So Yulon didn't know it. Correct, she did not know it. Well, February 9th, she shows up at school and Amy's gone. She's checked out, and supposedly her mother, Yolan, was upset. Mm -hmm. Where's my daughter? What do you mean she's checked out? Who, why was she upset then? Do you know? I have no idea why. That was the phone call that I got. Yolan had called me that day saying, do you know Kevin took Amy out of school? And I said, no. And then we found out going forward that it was 10 times he had checked her out. But that was checking out early. That was just picking her up after school. No, yeah, early. signing her out early. Yeah, which you didn't know. No. You, you knew he would pick her up mm -hmm. after school. Right. But you didn't know he was checking her out at like noon or something. No. For Never. the afternoon. That, that happened 10 times. Uh, 10 times. Yep. And that was to go in, in your theory, to go contemplate life or? I have no idea. Whatever. I'm very naive. I, I don't want to sit here and, and say I'm crazy, but what my head is filled with all these years with him saying, you're overreacting, how could you be jealous of a 16-year-old? I mean, they're embedded in my head. I just, I don't want to believe it. I'm trying to think of alternatives of why he would need to get her out of school right. to... Right, and that, that's, I have so many questions. I, I, just, I just want to know the truth. Well, what would be your questions? Um, if he was here right now and you gave him a truth serum, what would, what would you ask? Coming up. So he called you collect, mm -hmm. and you need to accept the charges or the call won't go through. Right. So it's been like five or six weeks since you talked to him. Mm -hmm. What was the first thing he said to you? Closed captioning provided by Next on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think I saw an interview and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martel's new boo thing. Oh. She felt probably happier when he was leveling down. Mm -hmm. But the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martel. Hey, what up? And don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, heat. it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville. New episode, Saturday at 8, 7 Central. There is nothing hotter than real, honest to goodness love. Mama wanna tell you where it's at. I wanna get that. I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the ball big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami yacht pod. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? Bring home a spellcasting adventure with the Harry Potter magic cast of wand. Stupefy! Connect your smart devices, cast spells, and witness the magic come to life. Lights. Lumos Maxima. Sounds. Media loading. And your TV. Expecto Patronum. Cool. The Harry Potter magic cast of wand. Order now. I'm taking you down bit by bit. I can't wait to see you try. It's only just begun. 
This is your lucky day. Time to upgrade. <laughs> because at 9, 8 central, dreams will come true. You can have it all. Catch an all-new My Lottery Dream Home, Friday at 9 on HGTV. I'm going to become a monk. You look like a happy Buddha. Aww. You get pregnant very easily. This with one more. What were we thinking? David and Annie and Lauren and Alexi. After the 90 days, Monday at 10 on TLC. Dr. Phil's exclusive interview continues. If he was here right now, what would you ask? Why he did what he did, why he left us, why he left his children, why would he give more attention to Amy than me, his wife? Okay, well, let me, let me go through some possible hypotheses for you. Mm -hmm. let, let's say one hypothesis is that he was just feeling midlife crisis, old and unappreciated and he just liked the attention of a young vibrant girl and it never went any further than that he was just infatuated and liked the attention where would that leave you I'm very hurt i'm hurt by the whole situation if another hypothesis was she developed into a young woman became sexually relevant and he preyed upon her. She was hungry for male attention. They began a sexual relationship, culminated with them being together in Mexico. What would be your reaction to that? Sickening. What do you think's most likely? I don't know. Do you think you'll ever know? Nope. Are you going to stay married? No, I can't live like that. Whether or not he says as sorry as he is, there's no excuse for what he did. I have four girls. They come first, so I filed for divorce, and we're just gonna move on. Since they were found in Mexico, mm -hmm. did they come back voluntarily, or were they extradited? They were extradited. And that took how long? Um, I would say maybe for a week mm -hmm. until they extradited him up here. You've talked to him from Miami or since he's been here? Here. In Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So he called you collect. Mm -hmm. And you need to accept the charges or mm -hmm. the call won't go through. Right. Was it just that one time? Mm hmm So how long had it been since you had talked to him then? I think about 25 days he's been in Lehigh County. Before he called you, how long had he been in there? Um, probably like two weeks. OK. So it's been like five or six weeks since you had talked to him. Mm -hmm. What was the first thing he said to you? He said, thank you for accepting my call. And you said? And I said, did you get the papers that I filed? He never once apologized, never once, you know, said he was sorry. All he said was, when he gets out, he'll explain the whole story. And you had papers and business stuff to talk about. How did he finance this trip to Mexico? He withdrew money from my bank account, um, and then Amy stole $10,000 from her mom. How much did he take from your account? He took 4000 And did it leave you in a bind? Uh, 28 cents. He left you with 28 cents? Mm -hmm. And I had just paid my mortgage payment, just paid my car payment, um, and house bills, and they all came back bounced. Uh, OK, OK. He leaves you and your children with 28 cents. Mm -hmm. But he's going to explain all of this when he gets out. When he gets out. Is there an explanation? No. Now, what do you think should happen to Kevin at this point? The best part about hosting Worst Cooks in America. Oh, it's a learning experience. <laughs> oh, I have to turn it on. I cut my little thingy. No, no, no. Woo. Watch out. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Season premiere, Worst Cooks in America, Sunday, January 1st at 8 on Food Network. Do you want your man or not? Do you know your plans or not? You gonna go back home or not? You gonna claim your throne or not? Is you Khaleesi or that other <laughs> name I don't remember? Do you feel like you're controlling? Love and Marriage DC returns. I am the way I am. I'm speaking up for myself. With all new episodes.
Love and Marriage DC returns January 2023. Part of Real Drama Weekends on OWN. Next on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think I saw an interview and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martell's new boo thing. Oh. She felt probably happier when he was leveling down. Mm -hmm. But the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martell. Hey, what up? And don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, heat. it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville. New episode, Saturday at 8, 7 central. There is nothing hotter than real, honest to goodness, love. Mama wanna tell you where it's at. I wanna get that. I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the ball big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami Yacht Pod. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? Tonight. With somebody out there targeting the cheerleaders. You never know what's happening next door. As far as I know, it was my neighbor. Murder in the Heartland, all new tonight at 9, followed by an old murder under the Friday Night Lights on ID. An all-new Celebrity IOU is here. As new stars go big in giving back. Bam! You made my life. <laughs> Celebrity IOU, all new Monday night at 9 on HGTV. Bring home a spellcasting adventure with the Harry Potter Magic Caster Wand. Stupefy! Connect your smart devices, cast spells, and witness the magic come to life. Lights. Lumos Maximum. Sounds. Media loading. And your TV. Expecto Patronum. Cool. The Harry Potter Magic Caster Wand. Order now. I'm taking you down bit by bit. I can't wait to see you try. It's only just begun. I just can't understand how anyone could ever do that. It went from a missing persons to where do I go from here? American Monster, all new, Sundays at 9 on ID. Dr. Phil's exclusive interview continues. What do you think should happen to Kevin at this point? Um, he needs to be punished for what he did. He definitely needs a lot of help. He needs to be put away. He needs to sit and think of how he destroyed my family and my girls. Amy, she needs help as well. But I have some things I want to say to you that I want you to consider right. going forward here. Your girls have you, mm -hmm. and they have each other. Mm -hmm. And clearly, they're going to feel a sense of disruption here. They're going to feel a sense of betrayal, just as if he's done this to them, just as he has to you. Because whatever he's done, he's betrayed you mm -hmm. romantically, and he's betrayed his vows to you. But he's also betrayed a family commitment to the girls. Mm -hmm. So they're violated as well. Mm -hmm. And when you lose a relationship like that, you're shocked, you're angry, you're, you're depressed, and you, you're just really upset about it. And th there's going to be a grieving process that you're all going to go through, and you won't go through it in the same way. And sometimes it will flare up as anger, and sometimes it'll be anxiety, sometimes it'll be withdrawal. And I really caution you to watch your girls and really pay attention to where they are on the curve because they'll go through this differently as will you mm -hmm. and you know they'll say oh they're gonna be embarrassed for the rest of their life in america we have add we move to the next headline mm -hmm. and the next story and people get absorbed in their own lives and they'll stop thinking about this much sooner than you might think i hope and look you, you are entitled to be upset you're entitled to be down about this you're entitled to your feelings and emotions. It's okay for the girls to see you cry. It's okay for them to see you upset because that's real, it's yeah. authentic. But they also need to see you wake up the next day and say, okay, it's a new day and here we go. So it's 
it's okay to be real with them and to talk about it openly. And talking about it is very important. Don't walk around like nothing happened. And let me talk to you about how to feel about Amy here. As much as you may feel that she is a perpetrator here, she is a child. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's 16, and they don't understand how this affects you and your family and your girls, and they don't, they don't have the maturity and the ability to see that. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a man here with a girl that has no father around, they're very easily exploited and they're treated in a grown-up way and they start to act like grown-ups and they may look like a grown-up mm. but they're a child inside yeah. she is a victim in this as well. well i'm not saying you should embrace her i'm not saying that that dynamic is is healthy enough for you to to do that but you need to realize she's a child that's all i'm saying right have your youngest asked where daddy is absolutely what do you tell them Closed captioning provided by... I'm going to become a monk. You look like a happy Buddha. Aww. You get pregnant very easily. This with one more. What were we thinking? David and Annie and Lauren and Alexi. After the 90 Days, Monday at 10 on TLC. No matter what part of my story you come in at, I'm always chasing the music. Nobody was trying to find a fat black girl that rapped and sang and played the flute. If I'm on that stage, we're connecting to something higher. The show must go on. The best part about hosting Worst Cooks in America. Oh, it's a learning experience. Ah! Oh, I have to turn it on. I cut my little thingy. No, no, no. Woo! Watch out! Ah! You'll get used to it. Season premiere, Worst Cooks in America, Sunday, January 1st at 8 on Food Network. Do you feel like you're controlling? Love and Marriage DC returns. I am the way I am. I'm speaking up for myself with all new episodes. Love and Marriage DC returns January 2023. Part of Real Drama Weekends on OWN. Next on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think I saw an interview and uh, they asked Mel how she doing with Martel's new boo thing. Oh. She felt probably happier when he was leveling down. Mm -hmm. But the level up is kind of a gut punch. Hey, Martel. Hey, what up? And don't keep me outside all this damn Yeah, it's outside today. You gonna invite me to that house? Don't play with me like that. Love and Marriage Huntsville. New episode, Saturday at 8, 7 Central. There is nothing hotter than real, honest to goodness love. Mama wanna tell you where it's at. I wanna get that. I was made for this. Get with it or get lost. You dropped the ball big time. I'm throwing y'all my very own Miami yacht part. It just shook up all of the dynamics. Y'all ready for this? Tonight. With somebody out there targeting the cheerleaders. You never know what's happening next door. As far as I know, it was my neighbor. Murder in the Heartland, all new tonight at 9, followed by an old murder under the Friday Night Lights on ID. This is your lucky day. Time to upgrade. <laughs> because at 9, 8 Central, dreams will come oh, true. You can have it all. My God. Catch an all new My Lottery Dream Home, Friday at 9 on HGTV. Bring home a spellcasting adventure with the Harry Potter Magic Caster Wand. Stupefy! Connect your smart devices, cast spells, and witness the magic come to life. Lights. Lumos Maximum. Sounds. Media loading. And your TV. Expecto Patronum. Cool. The Harry Potter Magic Caster Wand. Order now. Have your youngest asked where daddy is? Absolutely. What do you tell them? I just said, you know, they know where he's at. I just said, you know, he's away. Um, you know, he, he's gonna get some help. The question that I do have for you is how much do I tell them? Well, you know, the answer to that is you answer those questions in age appropriate ways mm -hmm. and you let them determine that 
the kids are two, seven, and 14? Uh, and... Two, seven, 11, and 14. Okay, 11 and 14 are pretty savvy. Okay. They're pretty savvy. And their follow-up questions are gonna be, did he run off with her? Right then I think what you have to say is, we don't really know everything that went on, but we know that, I can tell you what I know and feel, is that your, your dad has not been well and he has not made really good choices. And he's gonna really need to get some help because he's made some really bad choices and it's affected other people. Mm -hmm. And what I can tell you is I'm here and I'm not making bad choices because I have you guys number one. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And that's what I would tell them. Okay. And if you feel like that they, they need help, they need someone to talk to, we have this company called Doctor On Demand where we can set you or the girls up with board certified and licensed therapist, family therapist, that you can talk to face to face on your computer at home. Mm -hmm. We don't even have to go anywhere. Absolutely, they need it. If they feel like they need to talk to somebody, let's do it. If they need if they need to get around a computer together and talk to them, they can. Or to their office, either one, whatever you think is best. Mm -hmm. Whatever you need to help get you to heal the wounds through this process, let, let me help you with that, okay? Okay. Kevin is currently in jail on a $500,000 bond. He is charged with interfering with the custody of a child. Now, we have reached out to Kevin's attorney for comment, but have not heard back. Stacy Esterly has filed for divorce. Obviously, we wish her and her children the best as they begin to move forward with their lives. Amy's mother is suing Kevin Esterly and Amy's school for allowing her daughter to be signed out by Kevin and allowing him to be falsely listed as her stepfather on her school records. For more information, go to drphil.com. Thanks for watching. Today on an all new Dr. Phil, real estate bias. A seller will say, tell me about the buyers. I said, oh, they're a great couple. And they said, well, what's their nationality? Exposed. Recorded documents that are put on almost every property saying if you're not of Caucasian race, you cannot purchase that property. It's disgusting. Beyond disgusting. This cannot be tolerated because it's very true. We're gonna go down, we're gonna go down with a fight. Let's do it. Not a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today is gonna be a changing day in your life. Five, four. Get ready to take care of you. Yesterday, we talked about a topic that seemed to come out of nowhere to some Americans, yet very familiar to others. I'm talking about real estate bias, when homeowners suffer from discriminatory practices and bias in housing and mortgage lending fields. Now, examples of this include racial steering, lending discrimination, and appraisal discrimination. And yes, that is still going on in America. My co-executive producer, Astra Austin, brought this to my attention, uh, and I'm really glad she did. She explained to me that her parents were steered to a particular neighborhood when they bought their home on Long Island from a white realtor in 1975 during the middle of white flight, the phenomena of white people moving out of neighborhoods when black people move in. Now, years later, she estimates that her parents' impeccable, well-cared-for home is valued at least a quarter of a million dollars less than the same home in a majority white neighborhood. Now, she and many residents believe this gap is mainly based on the skin color of the neighborhood residents and not the quality of the homes. Now, Astra insisted that various forms of real estate bias are still happening nationwide, and we just had to talk about it. So yesterday, I met with people who claim they were victims of real estate bias, including Keisha, who made 
news headlines after she revealed on TikTok the strange and at times disturbing behaviors she witnessed after she inherited her grandfather Daniel's home in a multi-million dollar neighborhood in Seattle. America has a major racial wealth gap. The typical black family has only a fraction of the wealth of the typical white family. And many experts say that the root of that problem is real estate. One of the drivers of that wealth gap is redlining. Redlining was outlawed in 1968, but its impact remains. About two years ago, my life was turned upside down when I inherited my grandfather's multi-million dollar home. I started receiving letters from people attempting to buy his house. One stated that I was behind in my taxes, which I was not. One neighbor offered me $800,000. I know my house is worth almost $2 million. I decided to remodel the house. I have an 820 credit score. I was denied for loans repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. What do you think was the most racially motivated attempt to exploit you? The letters were very clear, like, we don't want you here. To get an appraisal, <clears throat> one of the requests is, we need you to not show that this is a black home. How many times did you try to get loans to renovate that home? Oh my God, I would say probably 12. Denied, 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 denied. I barely had any debt. I should have been a perfect candidate for Perfect her. candidate? Yeah. I mean, you, you got a great credit score. You have no mortgage. You did your renovations. Oh yeah. And how did you do them? Thank God my grandpa encouraged me to get a house at 21, so I sold my home to renovate. Therein lies the problem. Yes. You sold um, an asset that to... you had that had appreciated. Yeah. That's something that is absolutely shameful. James and myself have been licensed real estate brokers for more than a decade. On August 20th, we went to purchase three condominium units. This particular agent said, quote unquote, I'm not gonna sell to you because my gut feeling tells me that we wouldn't get along with you people. Oh. Probably I have my gut instinct told me probably not, we won't be able to get along with each other well. We knew that we were being discriminated towards. What were the questions she was asking? Are you from this area? Like, completely irrelevant questions. When you're silent about your pain, people will kill you and say you enjoyed it. Yeah. And so what are we supposed to do, just be silent? Josie Lynn declined to appear, but her lawyer did give a statement. My law firm represents Josie Lynn, while the Ra Maris have chosen to literally market their version of their interaction with Ms. Lynn to every media outlet, I urge caution in giving any credence to the Ramari's fictional account. When people move with breakneck speed to get in front of a camera, as the Ramari's have, to accuse another person of racial discrimination, media should approach such claims with extreme carefulness. In Ms. Lynn's case, when the unvarnished truth is told, it will be crystal clear that she did not discriminate against the Ramaris based on their race or ethnicity. Ms. Lin is a person of color herself. She is a Chinese immigrant who came to America to work hard. She is cognizant of and devoted to treating all people with respect and dignity, irrespective of race or ethnicity. Tanisha Tate Austin and her husband Paul say a white woman who appraised their home set its value at less than one million dollars. So they ran an experiment. For a second appraisal with the help of a friend named Jan. And the thing to know about Jan is she's white. They cleared away their own photos. After what they call their whitewash, the new appraisal came in. Nearly $1.5 million, close to half a million dollars more than the appraisal roughly a month before. <laughs> So, I need to so that means I can't pre-qualify for a mortgage. All right, so that means I can't go out to see anything. I'm just going to take some notes and introduce you to the city. I will stay here. Thank you. 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 There is clearly discrimination in real estate. It's especially prominent on Long Island. Where is the um, driver, Chris? I think a lot of it in, on Long Island is zoning, the banks, the inability to get mortgages. Those are powerful forces. <laughs> Real estate agents aren't the most powerful forces. In this country, a lot of generational wealth is built on real estate. And when people are discriminated against 
then that's going to perpetuate across generations, and it can't be allowed to continue. I want to add someone to the conversation, and this is Anthony Margulis, a real estate broker and owner of Amalfi Estates in Los Angeles. Uh, he claims he and his agents have witnessed some clients discriminating against prospective buyers based on skin color or sexual orientation, and they informed these clients that they're violating fair housing law. So, Anthony, thank you so much for being here and talking about this. You get pressure from the sellers. We do. You know, there's there's several areas that, that we see it happening. Um, a seller will say, tell me about the buyer's uh, the first time it happened, I've, I've had my company 30 years now. We've helped thousands of families throughout Los Angeles. Well, you, and your company's well known in LA for yeah, sure. We, yeah, we do quite a bit uh, in Los Angeles. And one of the first times a seller asked for probing information about the buyer, I said, oh, they're a great couple and, you know, down payment's good and uh, they're well qualified. And they said, well, what's their nationality? And I was so shocked hearing that from someone. You think they're a normal person. They, you know, you think you're talking to someone that has similar beliefs as you, and to see blatant racism, it's it's just it's shocking. And so you explain to them 1968 fair housing laws. You explain to them that's illegal. You 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 know we can't work with you. One, that's not that's not how our company operates. Added to some of this as well, um, appraisal issues that a couple of your guests have talked about. 97 percent of all appraisers are white. 97%. So then you wonder why there's an issue with appraisals. So I think we have to change it from within. And I think, you know, education